I don't think people understand just how powerful softwood can be. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe, like and share, so you never miss the secrets that could change the way you build. We often dismiss softwood, pine, spruce, fir, as weak, fit only for cheap, short-lived structures. Yet, in northern Europe, ancient softwood buildings have survived for centuries. Stave churches, farmhouses and barns, all crafted from the very woods we overlook. These structures aren't rare exceptions. They're proof of forgotten wisdom. The secret wasn't the wood itself, but how it was chosen, prepared and protected. Builders of old understood the forest intimately, selecting trees with care and timing. Their methods transformed humble softwood into a material of remarkable resilience. Today we favour speed and chemicals, losing the art of true durability. By rediscovering these ancient techniques, we can unlock the real potential of softwood. Building not just for now, but for generations. This is a journey back to a more sustainable, respectful relationship with nature. The journey to lasting softwood began with the timing of the harvest. Ancient builders waited for the deep cold of winter when trees were dormant and sap was low. Cutting wood in summer when sap is high invites decay. Fungi, insects and bacteria thrive on those sugars. Winter felled trees with less sap and fewer nutrients naturally resist pests and rot. The cold air also allowed logs to dry slowly, preventing cracks and splits. This patient approach, respecting the forest cycles, yielded superior timber. Modern industry cuts year-round, sacrificing quality for speed. The ancients saw the forest as a living system, not a factory. By waiting for winter, they gave their wood a head start on centuries of endurance. Sometimes the wisdom of waiting is the greatest tool of all. 11. After felling, the next step was soaking the logs in water, sometimes for months, even a year. This ancient watering process leached out the last sugars and starches, making the wood unappealing to pests and fungi. Cold water slowed decay, while the soaking equalised moisture, reducing future warping and cracking. The result timber that was stable, purified and ready for the next stage. Unlike today's chemical treatments, this method worked with nature, not against it. The ancients removed what attracted decay, rather than poisoning the attackers. This slow, deliberate cleansing laid the foundation for wood that could last centuries. Sometimes patience and water are the best preservatives. 9. Once soaked, the timber was air-dried, slowly for years, sometimes a decade. Stacked with care, each plank separated for airflow, the wood dried at nature's pace. This gentle process prevented internal stress, warping and cracking. Unlike kiln drying, which can leave wood brittle, Air drying preserved strength and stability. The builders saw this waiting as an investment in permanence, not a delay. The result? Timber that was strong, resilient and ready to endure. Rushing the process was never an option. Patience was the invisible foundation of their craft. True strength is built over time, not in haste. Nine. With the wood seasoned, ancient builders turned to fire, not to destroy, but to protect. Surface charring, or shou sugiban, created a carbon layer that shielded wood from insects, water, and even fire itself. The charred surface repelled pests, shed moisture, and acted as a natural fire retardant. 
Unlike modern paints, this layer became part of the wood, never peeling or flaking. It was a permanent transformation, using fire as a tool of preservation. This method showcased the builder's ingenuity, turning a destructive force into a powerful defence. Sometimes the best protection comes from embracing the elements. 8. The final layer of protection came from nature. Pine tar, linseed oil and beeswax. These finishes soaked into the wood, repelling water while letting it breathe. Pine tar, made from slow-burning pine roots, mixed with linseed oil, created a deeply penetrating weatherproof shield. Unlike modern varnishes, these natural finishes didn't crack or trap moisture. Maintenance was simple, a fresh coat blended with the old renewing protection. This approach allowed the wood to expand and contract naturally, preventing decay. The ancients finished their work with care, not chemicals, preserving beauty and strength for generations. 8. Even the best wood fails if exposed to water, so ancient builders designed for dryness. Steep roofs shed rain and snow quickly. Wide overhangs kept walls and foundations dry. Buildings were raised on stone, keeping wood off damp ground and allowing air to circulate beneath. Joints were designed to shed water, not trap it. Overlapping boards let moisture escape. Every detail worked to keep wood dry, preventing rot at its source. Smart design was as crucial as material preparation. The architecture itself became a shield, working with nature to ensure survival. 8. The stave churches and farmhouses of the north remind us true durability comes from patience, knowledge and respect for nature. Ancient techniques, winter harvest, water soaking, slow drying, charring and natural finishes offer a sustainable path forward. These methods empower modern builders to create lasting, beautiful structures without toxic chemicals or wasteful processes. By learning from the past, we can build for the future, crafting homes that endure for generations. This is the essence of true craftsmanship, working with nature, not against it. The wisdom of the ancients is not lost, it's waiting to be revived. By reclaiming these forgotten arts, we build not just for ourselves, but for those yet to come. 8.